Say hello to the Slash 8 Generation 6, the new face of enduro mountain biking. Let's get on topic. Hey everybody, it's Thomas with Get Out Arizona and you are watching another great episode of Bicycle Showcase on Toolbox Topic. I'm joined once again by my co-host Brandon Van Leuven. Brandon, how the hell are you, man? Doing all right. Dude, it's been weeks. <laughs> weeks. It has been weeks. <laughs> so for all our loyal viewers and subscribers, you guys know I've been on the road. You've been watching that stuff. So it has been six weeks since we've actually been here in the Trek Bicycle rough. Store. Yeah, but Trek Bicycle Store of West Phoenix in, in there. Goodyear, Arizona, because it's where the cool kids hang out and me. And yes, it feels good to be back home in the midst of all the bikes and good company with everybody here. Um, Brandon, the slat, when I read this, I, I just texted Brandon. I woke up in the morning, I saw it, and I said, oh my lord. This is the Slash 8 Gen 6, right. and what people are calling the new face of enduro mountain biking. And now before we go any further, there's been a lot of names thrown around with this. Uh, long Travel All Mountain, uh, High Mountain, it's like all kinds of stuff. Guys, get over yourselves. It's mountain biking, okay? <laughs> Just like it's all rock and roll, it's mountain biking. If you're on the trail, you're doing it right. Enough said. All right, Brandon, let's continue. All right. This thing is awesome. Not just with what we got going on down here. Right. right. I mean, obvious changes, but wow. It's a lot of stuff going on. I think, I think we need to just start from the beginning, the very front, and work back because there's yes. a, actually a lot to talk about uh, with this bike. And a lot of it is also new to me. Okay. And before we get started, this is not my world. This is not where I live at all. He's a roadie. You know, and well, I probably I'm should have done cross a country bit. mountain biking. Yeah. I'm more of a cross country guy, so I have no business swinging my leg over this bike because when I'm when, I when, all, I will. when all <laughs> said and done, I'll have about this much travel taken up, and <laughs> the bike will still be clean when it's done. But, uh, um, but like I said, let's start from the front and, and start working our way back because yeah. there's a lot to a lot to mention. Well, and before we do that, we've got a price tag of forty three ninety nine. Right. Um, and this, this is, is where we begin. This, this is, is our entry level slash. Yep. And at a weight of 36 something, a little over 36. Look for the banner, guys, because you yep. know how we roll. Yep. <laughs> um, so she is not a lightweight by any standard. No. So nope. um, to get that stuff out of the way. And this is going to be, I believe, their platinum hydroformed aluminum chassis on this. And unlike the conventional number systems, there's no five through eight and then a nine point whatever. It goes just eight. It goes eight and then goes nine, nine, nine point eight. And then anything with a decimal point in the Trek system, decimal point Needs signifies big carbon fiber. It means, <laughs> oh, so there's an aluminum frame above this. There's a nine. There's Trek. a nine so aluminum frame. If we go to the nine, then we get the, um, the transmission uh, drivetrain okay. on there. And then after that, we step up to carbon with a 9.8, but we go back to the XT drivetrain yeah, okay. so that the price doesn't Skyrocket, shoot up which too fast. Which is what, the fully loaded and one And then after that, it'll start, yeah, like, like almost yeah. 12,000 bucks for the XX, AX, ST type. Uh, right. I, I don't even know what all the numbers XYZ, are. XYZ, <laughs> PDQ. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, enough, guys. I know it's enough. been a while, so we got a lot of shenanigans to get enough. out of the way. <laughs> <clears throat> so, starting from the front All to right. the rear. All right. We have a travel of 170 millimeters. Correct. This okay. is a uh, Fox 36. Okay. On the 170, it comes stock with 170. The bike is capable, without ruining the geometry too much, of upgrading to 190 mil wow. front fork. That's a lot of soak up in the front. That is. But you have that ability to do that if you want to. Now, is that a new shock, or is that rebuilding the current shock, the 36, with internals to make it 190? I don't know if you can do that with this fork, Okay. but you can absolutely purchase a brand new fork. For another $1,000. Yeah. And there may, be, there, may be a, um, there may be a kit where you can extend this to 190. Yeah, I'm I would sure be kind of curious at that, so, okay. Yep. Chime in down below if you know the answer, because I won't look it up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so we got a Fox 36, yep. 170 millimeters of travel. Obviously, it's air. It's just fully oh, yeah. adjustable, Absolutely. dampened, all that good awesome. stuff. It's a fantastic board. Yeah, there's More really adjustability no adjustability than anybody else needs. Grip dampener yeah. on there. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, our hub set. What are we looking at? It's a boost. 
Okay. It's a boost uh, hub spacing. Um, because this is the eight, we have very modest wheel set on here with the uh, line comp um, wheel set. It's aluminum, like I said, it's boost. It's fine, okay. you know, we're good tubeless, of course, XR, uh, XR5 team issue tires on there, so very aggressive tires uh, put on there as well. Nothing right home about it. I'm gonna, gonna now mark this, 29 inch front wheel. We'll move on to the back later, but front's a 29. Dude, don't even tell me it says it's a mullet. We're not back there yet. Oh, Lord. <laughs> so, um, Achy, breaky heart. Okay. Yep. So we've got four piston brakes. Four piston brakes. This is okay. the, um, it's a Shimano. It's a M6100 Shimano brake set. It's four piston. Um, it's a trickle down technology kind of brake. So it's not as fancy looking as the new SX, SLX or XT. Um, it doesn't have the same kind of aesthetics i think yeah it's a but different it's got, finish but it's a different finish but it probably works just as great as the old xt did or the old slx did four pot uh piston so it's it should work just fine okay it just lacks a little luster is all yeah well, that's all yeah, i'm all about function before fashion my friends you know this while we're up here this bike just like the old not the old but just like the generation six um fuel ex you do have the ability to change the head tube angles Oh, by buying okay. different Spacers. cups, okay. by different buying different cups, cups for the headset. So, uh, our neutral position on here is 63 and a half. If you were to get the aftermarket cup, that you can go to slacker or steeper, you can adjust it by one degree off of neutral, okay. either slacker or steeper. Doing that, um, but that is on the eight an aftermarket item okay. that you'd have to get. But it gives you some adjustability. Okay, some people down dig the road. It. Some people dig it. Yep. Uh, cockpit. It's fine. Standard issue. Aluminum. Yep. Again, so just like the, any other eight. Um, I think you could Do always put a little more fun stuff on there, Damn. but perfectly functional, perfectly fine. Keeping the price real. Just, just a little lackluster again. Yeah. Now, moving back, they went back to our little frame stash for, you know, yep. this is where we keep our heroin and cocaine for the mm -hmm. hookers we see on the trail. Yeah. <laughs> so we do have this compartment on here, which was only on a carbon bike not too long ago. Right. And now they're... Um, adding that onto our aluminum well, frame as well. Shake it off there, Brandon. Come on, now don't friggin'. Well, now it won't go back on a bit. <laughs> so that, that comes a little bag to put your tube and your stash, whatever you want to put whatever in there. Whatever you want to put, put in there, my friends. And uh, the bag will actually keep things from rattling around, CO2. Yeah. Um, there uh, is. Your bacon strips, things like that. Right. There's no judgment here in the tree of trust that mm -hmm. is toolbox topping. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're talking about the down tube. This is the aluminum version. They still give you a. Um, um, a pad here yeah, right. for, um, you know, throwing in the back of your truck. What do they call that? A, um, a bump pad? A bump pad or, yeah. <sighs> dual, dual density pads, front and back, <laughs> on, on the down tube and up here again okay. for, for carting it around on the back of the truck. Uh, if you were to get the carbon version, they give you both um, carbon arbor dual density pads here, but they also they strengthened the down tube section of the... Um, of the frame for for rock chips and things like that there is an extra layer of carbon fiber protection built okay. under the clear coat okay so that's kind of cool they're yeah, thinking about it kind of cool they're, they're thinking, thinking about it, it. for all yep. you people that care about that type of stuff mm -hmm. i never wash my bike we've had this <laughs> there's going to be actually for the quick well, quick bike wash there's going to be a link up top guys and i am almost a convert maybe one or two more times i might start washing my bike but until then i let these guys take care of it as needed so <laughs> all right so now we're moving back Okay. Rear suspension. 170 millimeters as well. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, Fox Float X. He's got the, you know, the reservoir on there. It's a big hit. Yeah. It's a big hit. Rear, rear suspension on there. Plenty of tunability on that as well. Um, while we're talking about that, all right, let's jump back all the way. So this is a 27 and a half inch rear wheel bike. Right. What they want is for the front to really be able to, be able to um, you know, monster truck over things, but they want the back to be flickable. They want it to be, you know, easier to throw around. Right. So they put a 27 and a half inch wheel on that, on the back, on this particular bike. It comes stock with a mullet setup. Okay. If you were to purchase an aftermarket suspension linkage here, you can turn this bike into a full 29 okay. and a half, uh, 29 um, inch wheel bike, okay. front and rear. People that are shorter, sorry. If you have a small, you only have 27 front and rear, okay. no adjustability there. Okay. But this one does give you some options. Okay, and we'll get back to that in more a minute. Cut because the light went out. <laughs> Got, and I was too lazy to set up the light this morning, guys, so that's why that matters. So, All right, so let's get back to this. It's mullet setup and everything like that. I, you know, I've only ridden a mullet setup once, and that was in um, Aurora, Colorado. Hey, Eric, 
<laughs> coming back to hang out with you and ride again. Thank you for your hospitality when I was there. Um, and it was a lot of fun. And to be honest with you, I didn't really notice the difference. Oh. It was a 29 up front and a 27 in back. But to me, the bike rode just like my fuel, which is a straight 29 or so. Um, I'm not sure how much of a difference it would make to me. To um, not to me. Again, this isn't where I live. This, this isn't is, where you live. I don't live. think I will find, I don't think I'll see the nuances right. in that at all just because I'm not that kind of rider. Now, but. for me, it would be more psychological and OCD. I would definitely want to swap out Link and put a 29 on the back <laughs> just because I couldn't handle having two at just different size as far as that goes. But you can do that on this without any issues. You can. Okay. Yep. Um, now, can you order it as a straight 29 so no. you don't have to monkey with it? Nope. No. It, all, all of them up into the most expensive one it's gonna comes be, as a mullet. Correct. That's up Screw to you. you, track. <laughs> That's up to you. That's what I got to say. <laughs> Screw you. Well, this is probably what they consider the optimum configuration for the bike. <sighs> I'm sure. So, and yeah. I may go over it one day, but <laughs> maybe not. Now, we know we can um, increase the travel up front to 190. Can we increase the travel back here? So you are uh, set at From what I said, I, I did not see that you can. Okay. So that'll monkey with it a little, a little bit. And too I don't much. think any necessarily. But what you can do is reverse. It used to be called a meal link, uh, but now it's down here, so okay. you can reverse to a more aggressive position on the um, on the suspension linkage as well if you wanted, if you choose to do so. Yeah. All right. Well, at least you have that yeah. adjustability. Yep. Trex Evil Link on here. Before we go back too far. Um, let's talk about the C-tube. They okay. did a couple cool things on this one. Okay. Uh, the C-tube in relation to the head tube angle is, is fairly steep, so it's pretty, pretty efficient still for such a high travel bike this is. But what they also did was they made it possible for you to run uh, 200 millimeter drop posts really? on this one. Okay. So anything medium and above, you can run up to a 200 millimeter post slammed. Right. Um, anything medium and below 170. So That's they want to give travel. you a significant amount of drop yeah. on this bike. So I think that's clever. I think it that is. was a good. Uh, I think that was a good move. So yep. I'm happy about that. No, that is a, a so really some nice people improvement. People love their droppers. Yep, <laughs> comes with a mud guard yep. in the back. In the back. Um, which eh, take it or leave it. Um, we've got through axle boosted. This one has the XT, so we're looking at an 1150, not a 52 because it's on a shram. 51. 51. Okay. Uh, so I had a hard enough time to remember these head tube angles and stuff. <laughs> well, the point is, it's not a shram, so we're not seeing the 52. Right, so it's yeah. I'm, there's going to be something on there that actually shows what it is. Now let's talk about this front setup, Brandon, because this front setup is what everybody is just raging over. Right. And I'm, I'm pretty proud of them for sticking their neck out and doing this. This is pretty cool. This is what kind of makes Trek They're awesome. Yeah. And also it kind of bites them in the ass sometimes, yeah. I have to say. But um, that's awesome that they decided to go. There's only a few manufacturers out there that do the high pivot design like this. So... Hats off to them for trying something new and, right. and, and getting after it. And, um, you know, they do have the support and the money to really make it work right, too. Yeah. So <clears throat> I'm, I'm pretty, again, I'm pretty proud that they they even try to do something like this. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's different and it's innovative. And, and again, are they the first on the market that has done it? No. no. Um, kind of similar to Apple. They probably waited, perfected mm -hmm. it to, for them and then release something. Now, some of you might be going, hey, Thomas, how come you aren't talking more about the high pivot? This is a whole nother episode, my friends. This isn't something we're oh, gonna dive into. Yes, oh. Brandon's just finding out about this. So <laughs> he's got homework to learn about the high pivot, okay? We can give it a brief, okay. All right. Well, you can give it a brief one, but we gotta go in depth because people, right. you know, they're inquiring okay. minds, they wanna all know, right. All right. so. All right, so just so you know, the high pivot is gonna do two things for you. It's gonna, A, change the axle path under big under big hits 170 millimeter travel is a lot of travel yes. so if you had the uh, axle path any differently what happens is you're kind of going against the grain when you hit bumps the way i like to think about this way i explain to people is this axle path with a high pivot kind of rolls with the punches a little bit better okay. instead of you fighting against the forces against a hit right. it actually goes rearward of slightly and rolls over things okay. if that's a just think of it as rolling with the punches rolling that's with the punches that's probably the best way i can get to what's real <laughs> that's probably the best way i can explain that the idler pulleys that we see on there yes. that accommodate the the high pivot what that does is and i didn't even know this existed until just recently is uh that will eliminate the what's called pedal kickback okay i don't again i don't even know this existed i've this never heard not, of it before so 
in these high travel bicycles, what happens is the suspension, you're going to run out of chain length. Okay. And when that chain oh, that length runs sense. out, it stops. Yep. And it'll actually kick you back and kick back the pedals as well to some extent. Right. So again, we're going to get into this more in depth, in depth with all the geometry and all that. Mm -hmm. But two things, it changes the axle path to roll with the punches yeah. and it helps with all the idler pulleys, helps eliminate pedal kickback for a smoother ride and to get the most out of your suspension. Okay. Awesome. That's well, yeah, most, that'll be an in-depth video. Most cut way we can explain it. Yep, coming up here very soon, my friends, so stay tuned for that. So, um, this is a good-looking bike. Um, all around, it just, wow. I mean, especially when you see it from this side. It's, the geometry looks good. It, yeah. It looks nice standing there. If you look at, go back and look at the first slash. You're like, <laughs> Yeah, it's a little rough. I mean, we didn't know any better back right. then, but, you know. Oh well, yeah, they, they we are better. They perform better. So riding so rigid on. seat posts. So what do you do <laughs> at that point? <clears throat> but it's a good looking bike. And again, and I will not harass or <laughs> cast aspersions. We're considering this. It's not a long travel, but it has a lot of travel and it's an enduro bike. Now they're calling it an all mountain. Well, let's face it. They have long travel bikes that are yeah. more than this. I've heard described I mean, again as an all like mountain long travel, high travel, high travel, all mountain or an enduro bike. Mm -hmm. So who is this bike for? And I'm going to preface this question for you guys at home, you viewers at home, you know, and I flippantly said to Brandon, so what? I'm going to sell Esmeralda and buy, you know, a nine, nine, six version of this and build up. And he said, no. Now, doesn't mean I'm not going to buy one of these bikes, but <laughs> who is this bike for and where does it sit in the Trek family? Because my Fuel EX99, I effing love that bike, dude. Like, it's it's my Toyota Tacoma. Yeah. It gets me everywhere. Sure, do I bottom out on some stuff? Yeah, because of that travel. But but who is this bike for? Especially for a rider like me who rides everything and I don't right. care. Right. You know, and I'll ride it with any bike. I don't care. I'm going to say you're aggressive. You're a very skilled, aggressive downhill rider. Okay. will be able to really pick out the nuances that this bike brings out. Okay. Again, like I said, me, I'm just going to go, all right, feels great. You put me on a cross-country bike, you put me on a carbon road bike, oh, man, I'll pick it I'll yeah. pick it to shreds. This bike, I, it's out of my league. It's out of your league? It's totally okay. out of my league. <laughs> so for a person who is primarily going to be that XC rider, they're going to fall more aligned to maybe like a Fuel or a yeah. Fuel EX or maybe even a Top Fuel. Yeah. Yeah. But cross country and above, now right. we're starting to lean over this. Probably like your motocross, your crossover motocross okay. riders. This would be perfect. They probably one. love this. They'll probably under, understand what all that suspension is doing and what, how it's working for them. Okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah. yeah. It's, it's an aggressive, an aggressive downhill bike. And from what I hear, <laughs> I haven't ridden this bike. This is more of an introduction than a review. Right. I have not ridden this bike, but they say, and the pedal's pretty good too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which we've talked about before on long travel bikes, the pedal efficiency is horrible. And this is why for typically cross country, you don't see a bike like this in that category yeah. because of the lack of efficiency in your pedal stroke. Um, but I can see for somebody who's doing so much, if they're coming in for a bike where this might actually work better than the fuel, the fuel EX. So in yeah. some cases, if you rip it up downhill, so it'd be awesome for you. Yeah. Yeah. Or you just be like me and just get it because you want it. So man, what else am I going to do? You know, no, seriously, guys. All right. Any closing thoughts on this bike, Brandon, before we wrap up? It was a lot. This bike does a lot of things. Um, closing thought is I like the new technology again. Like I like what they're doing. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see what happens with all of this. When right. we saw this and we opened up the box and we saw High Pivot come out, we it's gonna be a maintenance look at nightmare. It, like, what is <laughs> what is, could possibly go wrong with this? And you know, yeah, that's how how we look at bikes. When we start adding so many things on yep. here, this is this bike could potentially become a uh, a maintenance headache. Right. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Right. Again, <laughs> but is, that's that's what I take away from this. New yes, you get all the latest and greatest, but what? What is all that going right. to hold for us in the future? We'll see. All right. Well, there you have and it. And that goes for any high pivot bike. Anytime you're adding anything like this, well, maintenance it's like is adding going a, up. a motor on a pedal assist. Yeah. Maintenance is going to go up. Right. You're going to have those issues. Um, you know, additional technology so is going to come. Keep that in mind. There's a lot to there's a lot to take care of. Oh yeah. With this bike. Absolutely. So, 
All right, my friends. Well, there you have it. Like, subscribe, bell notification icon. It's the trifecta we love so much here at Get Out Arizona. Helps out the video, it helps out the channel, and we certainly appreciate your support. The link's down below. The most important one is to check bicycle stores of West Phoenix and Goodyear. Follow that link if you have any questions about today's video. You don't want to comment down below. I don't know why you wouldn't, but you know, you can give Brandon and his team a call. They will be more than happy to help you. There are going to be affiliate links down below. If you make a qualifying purchase, we will receive a small commission, but you will not be charged anything additional and la additional. And last but not least, our social media. Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, the devil's work. It's necessary to get the word out about Get Out Arizona. So follow us on one of those links. Show us some love. It's the other trifecta we love so much here at Get Out Arizona because it helps out with park passes, gas money, and, you know, of course, uh, coffee money was the other one, the important one, even though I drink decaf and it's a dirty lie at that point. So, my friends, what do we say at this point? Be kind to yourself and others. Be amazing stewards of that trail. And we have to ask, what are you waiting for? Get out of Arizona. Yeah. It's good to be back, my friends. And we'll <laughs> see you on that next adventure. Take care, everybody. Brandon, we'll see you next week. Yeah.